here in Germany, cycling and not following the rules can get you fined. Hey everyone, we are back in the great outdoors again and I am so excited to bring you another video about Germans and how crazy they are about cycling. And although we've talked about that in a video before, today I wanna go into some of the rules and some of the things that you're gonna need to know before you even hop on that bike here in Germany. As a Canadian, I was definitely hesitant to cycle here because back in Canada where yes, there's rules, whether people follow those rules or not, I can't exactly say. And to be honest, even the police officers, I don't think know all the rules. But here in Germany, rules are rules and some things might even shock you well back at home in canada i would just hop on my bike and go here in germany it's a little different actually it's very different this video is going to give you all of that information in one easy to understand video so that you can get out and hop on that bike of yours the very first day you're in germany and while i share all of these safety rules and regulations and important surprises and tips that you're going to need while cycling here in germany i'm going to bring our fafri's f20 pro with us today through the city because maneuver through the city with this one is a gem. It is a super affordable e-bike, but it's also a klapprad. What is klapprad in English? I don't even think we have these bikes in Canada. If we do, I've never seen them. So this klapprad or this bike that folds in half, let's say in English, makes it really practical to just throw it in your car and go to the Netherlands, which is what we're gonna do in a couple weekends. We live in Dusseldorf, which means we live in the city. Cycling isn't always super easy, depending on which roads you're on. Doing this with a Klapprad e-bike makes it even more practical. This bike behind me was made for efficiency. With a 250 watt motor and a 648 watt hours battery, it is perfect for city rides. And despite being super lightweight, weighing in at 25.5 kilograms, making it much easier to handle, especially for me, my muscles are lacking. It's whopping battery power still fits in the compact body of the bike. So, are you ready? It's time for a test run. And while we test run this bike for you guys, we're going through eight super important things that you need to know before you hop on that bike here in Germany. I've mentioned it before and I will mention it again. Following the rules in Germany, especially cycling safety is so important. It's mandatory. Some schools, I don't know if it's mandatory, but here in Dusseldorf where we live, when the kids are in third or fourth grade, they actually learn how to cycle on the roads. They learn all about bike safety. They learn how to turn left, turn right. They learn all about the signs. They become masters of cycling. I think this is what we all need as immigrants as well. First and foremost, if you don't follow this rule, you're gonna get hurt. You have to stay in the cycling lane. The cycling lane is a red path typically you might not notice it's red because it could be old it might look pink or a little bit discolored compared to the sidewalk this is where you're going to cycle if there is no bike path you are going to need to cycle on the road children up until the age of eight will cycle on the sidewalk that is okay you as an adult are not allowed to cycle on the sidewalk and between the ages of eight and ten you can choose to either cycle on the sidewalk or if you're already comfortable you can cycle on the road too next rule you need to use your hand signals ganz klar left hand out you're turning left right hand out you're turning right hand up you're telling them that you're about to stop and hand down to your side you're telling them that you're about to slow down if you're coming from north america no you can't turn right on a red here even if you're a cyclist never cycle in a pedestrian zone i know it looks tempting it is very important that you do not you will likely get in trouble you will probably get yelled at by many germans around you just hop off your bike walk it through the pedestrian zone and then hop back on your bike unless you find a sign that has a picture of a bike and underneath says frei this means it is okay to cycle your bike it is just not okay to drive through this pedestrian area and similar to driving a car you always have to drive the direction of traffic so in germany on the right hand side of the road i'll give you the rundown now so that you can just jump on your bike and head on out the door today let's go through a few of the signs now caution cyclists this is a bike path this is a walking and bike path. This means you need to bike on the left-hand side because the people, the pedestrians, are going to be walking on the right-hand side. This means it is a cycling street. You can cycle here. This is the end of a cycle street. This is a biking zone. Cycling here is forbidden. When you see the red circle with the symbol inside, it means that specific vehicle is not allowed to drive in this area. This means we're hitting a dead end, except cyclists and pedestrians can continue onwards. And other signs, of course, that are relevant for cars are also relevant for bikes. So here, for example, absolutely no entrance. Don't do it. 
you should stay updated on what to do when you're driving here in Germany so that you also understand the rules that apply to cyclists as well. Next up, one thing that you will notice in Germany, mostly in major cities, is that there are actually specific lights for bikes, red, yellow, and green, just like the lights for the cars, but this time you're actually gonna be following the lights for the bikes and not the lights for the car. Another point that's going to interest you because it is really gonna affect you if you get caught is that here in Germany, cycling and not following the rules can get you fined. And not only can it get you fined and you can pay a hefty amount of money, but you can also get points added to your license, demerit points, that can get you your license taken away. So while cycling on the sidewalk doesn't sound that bad, I know many people who have gotten caught before, it is is a 55 euro fine. Parking your bike on a sidewalk that's kind of blocking people from getting through, that's gonna cost you 50 to 55 euros. Cycling in the wrong direction, 20 euros. Not signaling properly, 15 euro fine. Cycling hands-free, I don't even know how to do it, but if you can, don't do it it's a five euro fine. If your lights aren't working or your brakes aren't working or something's not working on your bike, you will likely pay a 20 euro fine. And in the most obvious case of you getting your driver's license taken away, if you are cycling intoxicated, you can get your license taken away. Do not do this. I will leave a link down below. They go through all of the fines that you can get if you are not following the rules on your bike here in Germany. Don't let this scare you. I wanted to create this video so that you are well aware of the different fines so that you don't get stuck paying hefty fines. So in Canada, it's normal just to have like a bike in your garage that you have for 20, 30 years. It's a bit rusty. You don't mind. You're just going to use it occasionally. That is not going to pass here in Germany because your bike does have to be road worthy. Like I mentioned, if things are not functioning properly, you will get a fine, which means your front lights and your back lights have to be working. And they also have to follow the Straßenverkehrszulassungsordnung, which means the front light has got to be white and the back light is going to be red. Even both pedals should have two yellow reflectors. Both tires must be integrated with these reflector strips. They are typically orange, or you can also have these little orange spokes on your tire that are reflective as well. Your bike should be equipped with a loud functioning bell and two independent fully functioning brakes, one on the front, one on the back. And again, if you don't want to follow these rules, you can be fined. But also, most of us cycle daily, so we actually have developed a habit to bring our bikes in to a bike repair station and just have like an annual checkup on the bike. Well, after I go through all of these rules with you, you're probably thinking, do I need a license to ride a bike in Germany? Like this is ridiculous. <laughs> no, you actually don't need a license to ride a bike in Germany. Although the kids, like I said, do take some sort of course in school that gets them their Fahrradfrüherschein, which is kind of exciting. Even with an e-bike like the Fafris, which we're driving around with today, you do not need a license because it only goes up to 25 kilometers an hour. There are actually e-bikes that go 45 kilometers an hour. And because this is classified as a small motorcycle, you do need to get a motorcycle license for this e-bike. However, even though you don't need a license and you don't need to take a course, I would highly recommend, this was one of my biggest mistakes moving to Germany, is I did not take a course. I have been educating myself and spending a lot of time trying to figure it out as I go. It's not ideal. I wouldn't recommend it. I've made so many mistakes and I've paid for them. Also, if you actually are interested in taking a bike course, I will link a few options down below that are in the English language here in Germany. And while this this point is going to sound a little bit crazy to you. I would actually consider insurance on your bike. I know I never was an insurance person until I moved to Germany, but it makes sense. Yes, I have insurance because it is very cheap in Germany, but also bike theft is a huge thing in Germany. When I talk about safety in Germany, bike theft is number one on the list. I actually posted a video about is Germany a really safe place to live? And one of the points was like, well, yeah, it's safe to live, but you just have to be careful with your belongings sometimes like pickpocketing, pity theft, and people stealing your bike is not uncommon. So insuring your bike, if it's of any value to you, especially if it's an e-bike, I would highly recommend. We have insurance for all of our e-bikes, not any normal bikes we have, mostly because we bought them at the flea market and they're garbage quality anyway, hoping that nobody's going to steal them. That is also a really good tip if you're getting started out. Just buy a crappy bike from the flea market because they're not as likely to get stolen as the more expensive e-bikes or brand new bikes that you see locked around the city. If you are going to buy insurance, or I guess even if you're not going to buy insurance, invest in a good lock. This was one of the major mistakes that I made as well. I just bought some cheap lock from Aldi, I think. They are a lot easier to cut through. So the German favorite is the Abus lock, Abus? 
I'll show you a picture here. And they are supposed to be one of the sturdiest lux out there from price point. They're actually not that expensive and they're definitely worth it. This is also very important for insurance purposes. And I say that because in the fine print of many of the bike insurances, they actually say that you have to have a particular lock, like a particular brand of lock in order for that insurance to even be valid in this case. So if I said, yeah, my bike got stolen. They were like, well, did you lock it? I'm like, yeah, I, with my ID lock, they'll be like, sorry, we can't cover you because an ID lock is not in our insurance policy. So my e-bike insurance is currently with GetSafe because they are one of the cheaper options, but they do have this rule as well. An ABUS lock is usually your best bet, but they do have other brands in that list as well that you can check out in their fine print too. And I have them because their fine print is in English. <laughs> Also icing on the cake, I'm not sure if it costs anything in other cities, but here in Dusseldorf, it is absolutely free to register your bike at the police station. You actually get a number from the police on a sticker that you place on your bike. This might not help a ton, but then at least the thieves know, okay, this bike is registered with the police. So if this bike is found, the police will have more to do with it. Probably not, but at least if the police do find your bike from a thief in a probably white minivan full of other stolen bikes on their way to France or something, they can contact you and give you your bike back. A couple of my friends this has actually happened to and they have gotten their bike back. So it's definitely worth just registering it, especially since it's probably gonna be free for you too in your city. And last point, while we're still talking about insurances, you need to get liability insurance. This is not mandatory, but talk to any German or even any immigrant living in Germany and they are gonna tell you, yeah, get liability insurance, not just for cycling, but for many other areas of your life. If something happens, if you make a mistake, if you break something, if you hurt someone, this liability insurance is gonna cover you. I have it because A, I have kids and they're covered in the insurance policy. I have get safe for that as well. But 83% of people living in Germany have liability insurance for this exact reason, because A, it's cheap and B, people use it. People really use it. So for example, when my son is cycling, he has hit a Tesla. I don't know if you guys saw that in one of my Instagram reels. <sighs> Thankfully, having liability insurance is gonna save your butt on so many levels. I have almost like hit off people's mirrors on the side of their cars, not because I'm a bad cyclist, but because when you're driving in the city, it is very, very hard to maneuver through traffic and people park in the dumbest areas. So sometimes you're getting very close and it is not unlikely that you're gonna use your liability insurance at some point. So. How do I feel about our new Fafri's bike now that we've tested it out throughout the city? It's great. I mean, I kind of knew that I was gonna like it because I'm like absolutely sold on e-bikes, but I've never actually tried a klapprad before. So my assumption was that the quality wasn't gonna be as great because it's a klapprad, which means like it needs to be smaller. It needs to be more, I don't know, agile and bendable which means that the pieces in it are not going to be that good quality but it is a really good sturdy bike and i have to say one thing that shocked me the most was the fat tires at first i was like whoa those tires are big but the fat tires actually were really nice driving in the city because i've actually had a really bad accident once where my tire got stuck in the tram track and the tram was coming and my bike was like bent in half it really scared me and with the fat tires it doesn't happen i was like cycling close to the tram lines and across the tram lines and i never got stuck because of the size of the tire also their smart lcd display was really nice when so it has an added like bit of color that you can easily see and monitor while you're cycling and what I also thought was really cute and practical was that even though it's a klapprad, they have this really cute like rear rack that's very practical and pretty stylish too. And again, what shocked me because it's a klapprad, I was really expecting not much at all, but I was really impressed with the suspension of the bike. I don't know. I'm just like through and through an e-bike girl. I absolutely love e-bikes. I'm going to be honest. I don't think I would ever go back <laughs> to a normal bike again because the e-bike I can use as a normal bike is if I want. And if I want to actually like take the weight off of the bike, I can take the battery out as well. I'm really happy. So I hope that a lot of these tips and tricks and rules that I've shared with you don't scare you off, but make you confident and comfortable that you can now go hop on that bike and have some fun. Vielen, vielen lieben Dank und wie immer, bis später.